Um, next up is our lovely Slovenian speaker, uh, Jasna, and she is the founder and director of Virtua PR, uh, a, an agency which is um, focused on inbound marketing, and uh, she's working globally as well. And she's going to talk about the rise of a chatbots. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So. Um, I come from a country that's smaller than yours, so uh, just a million people, so I understand completely. And when I saw the G-Spot campaign, I thought this could be Ljubljana, my hometown, <laughs> because it's, it's the same feeling. I love uh, Vilnius, so as far as I've seen it um, in a few hours that I've been here. Uh, it's really, really beautiful, and um, I think it has the similar um, effect on people like it does uh, when people come foreigners, when they come to Ljubljana, when they see, oh, it's so beautiful, how come I didn't know that it was so great? So, um, yeah, today I'm going to talk about chatbots. And um, the board was uh, kidding with me that I should just, you know, put up a chatbot and <laughs> just leave and we, we can discuss it like that. Uh, but no, uh, I won't do that. Um, first, can you raise your hand if you ever used a chatbot? Okay, I think more, more than half, I could say. Okay, and can you raise your hand if your experience has been at least one time positive? Not as many. Okay. Yeah, so um, chatbots are still in, in its infancy, uh, unfortunately, but uh, I think it's growing. I think it's uh, doing more and more. And um, my main reason why I would like to present this is because I think that uh, communicators, marketers, we need to know more about technology. We need to know how to use it. And I want to show you that uh, creating chatbots, it's not hard. Uh, so I cannot do any programming. Um, I am a bit geeky, but um, I can still uh, program, at least program, uh, a little bit program, a chatbot that functions and that delivers results, and I'll show you how. So uh, maybe you've already seen this, uh, the um, strategic um, technology, uh, techno technology sorry, trends uh, from Gartner. Um, I think it's important that we follow the technological, technological trends. And uh, the number six, I think, here, yeah, is uh, conversational platforms. So the conversational platforms are more and more interesting and it's one of the trends uh, that we all need to learn. Uh, what does conversational platform mean? Basically these are chat, these are chat bots and uh, what are the chat bots and why should we use them? So um, you probably know, if you've probably seen uh, Facebook Messenger chat bots, right? So uh, I think messenger, number of messenger users is about 1.3, 1.4, something like that, billion. Uh, the reason that why we would use Facebook uh, messenger bots is that uh, that's where the users are. The users are already there. So when they have a question, we are impatient. We want the answers as quickly as possible. Um, I see that a lot of millennials are here and um, some people say that um, you are the reason why we are using the chatbots because uh, you chat a lot, you want uh, you know, instant gratification, you want quick results. Uh, but I think also um, older people like me who are not millennials also, well not that old, um, also think, uh, also like to use. Uh, I prefer texting to calling, I prefer using that and I prefer getting the information fast and getting the information also, for example, um, at 11 p.m. when I have some time, when I, you know, it, it's a little bit more quiet, I can uh, use my, my phone or my uh, laptop and just discuss it with either online chat support, so a live person actually typing the answers, or a chatbot. And I recently had an experience with the, um, uh, a website, um, I, I actually saw a, an ad for a dress on my Facebook timeline. I liked the dress, I clicked on it. Uh, I wasn't sure when it would be delivered in Slovenia, it wasn't really clear. So I used their chatbot on, on their website and at 11 p.m. I had, um, I, I had my answer. Uh, the answer was positive, um, so the, the deadline uh, worked for me and I ordered the dress. What are the odds that I would order a dress if I didn't have the option of asking a bot at that time? Probably minimal, because I didn't really need it. Um, but I liked it. It was 11 p.m. I got reassurance that it's going to be on time, so I bought it. So at least, you know, and it's not really scientific, but at least I can say they have one more, uh, uh, one new customer that they wouldn't have otherwise. 
So the graph that I'm showing here is actually that um, the messaging apps, the big four messaging apps, already in 2015, they over, uh, overtook the big four social networking apps. So what we're seeing here is that uh, it beca it's becoming more and more important. Um, when Facebook, uh, I think that was two, two and a half years ago, when they, um, when, when they said on, at their conference that they were going to um, use the chat, they were going to allow using the chatbots, um, I think in about one and a half years or one year, it was, we had uh, 100K, uh, 100K chatbots on Messenger. Now it's already, I think that result is from, the, the numbers are from April, May this year. Uh, it's already 300,000. So a lot of companies are using the chatbots now. So we can have the chatbots either on Messenger, Viber, WhatsApp. So all these messaging apps that we already use. Um, is there anybody here that doesn't use any messaging apps? Mike, I think you almost raised your hand. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm kidding. I, I know you use it. Um, so yeah, basically we all do it. But also, you can have chatbots on the website because sometimes, for example, I was uh, last week I was in Boston. Air France lost, lost my luggage, unfortunately, and um, I didn't have it for five days. So that was a lot of shopping in Boston. Um, so uh, I used their messaging app. I went to on, on their website, and if they had a messaging app on the website, so specifically for baggage, I would use that. They didn't, but uh, in an email that I got with. Uh, no uh, really relevant information. There was one relevant thing, which is a, a link to the Facebook Messenger. And I asked there um, some questions. Unfortunately, it took them you know, half a day to answer. So that's not really a good use of uh, uh, messaging apps. So, uh, it's meant to be quick, you know, like uh, conversing. What are chatbots? I think you probably now already know, or you probably already knew before. Um, so we are helping, we're getting help from computers to answer the questions. And um, it can be really, they can be really powerful. They can be really, um, so they can use uh, AI, they can learn why, uh, while they're um, talking, sort of talking with us. Uh, or they can be pretty simple um, that we can program, you know, by ourselves. It is the, the, the kind that I can do. Um, so it's only, um, you know, it's a decision tree. So you're asking a few questions and based on the, uh, the answer, you can ask additional questions. So uh, it makes sense. Um, when we co communicate on, with bots um, on, on uh, these apps, um, you want to be conversational. So I'll talk a little bit more about how to, how to write for the chatbots because it's not the same. And if you remember, you're on uh, all in communications. If you remember the early days, so that was like probably five, ten years ago, ten years ago um, on Facebook, I don't know if you noticed this, but a lot of the companies, they communicated on Facebook page similar, uh, similarly like they would if they um, you know, post a press release. So it was really official, really you know, boring language, and you don't communicate like this. So we all need to really um, focus on, on uh, what the platform uh, sort of uh, demands of us or what the users of that platform uh, expect of us. Um, and this is an example, um, baggage again. This is an example of um, Hawaii, uh, Hawaiian Airlines and um, it's a little bit bizarre um, because they have it, um, it's really hidden. So I learned about this uh, uh, bot from uh, Shell Holtz and his podcast. Uh, and uh, he's a longtime member of IABC, so uh, many of you probably know him. Uh, so I was listening to his podcast, so I wanted to check it out. And it's a little bit bizarre because it's hidden, um, quite hidden on their, on their page. Um, but uh, you can see that uh, this bot is the one that keeps learning. I didn't really try it because I didn't fly with them and I didn't want to joke with the bot. Um, but uh, th this bot is learning, which means that uh, based on what I'm asking, based on what, what it's answering, and uh, when I tell him, or uh, you know, I'm, I'm being personal, so it's him, um, when uh, I respond, if it helps me, then you know, it will learn uh, to be more helpful. Uh, but not all bots are like that. So we have, we can divide the bots in sort of two main groups. So one of them is utility bots and the other is informational bots. So you can um, have the bots, you know, buy tickets, 
uh, order Uber, um, you know, things like that. Or they can be quite simple, like, you know, pushing just the blog post. So it's, uh, you know, many of the um, different uh, agencies or coaches uh, who re regularly blog, they have a Facebook Messenger, which basically the only thing it does is it pushes out a new event or a new blog post. And if you, if you ever use the Facebook Messenger, what did you have to do before it started to send you, send you messages? Yeah, you have to, you, ha you had to confirm. So uh, one of the things that we need to, um, you know, be realistic about, and I think it's a good thing, is um, that it's still not, um, uh, we can't be, um, you know, the, we can't just start communicating with somebody. So we need their confirmation similarly like we would uh, if uh, we wanted to send them a newsletter. Uh, so if you don't confirm in 24 hours that you want the message, uh, it will just disappear. So it won't start uh, messaging you. Uh, so it can be the simple, you know, just pushing out the content, which is really more or less uh, one way. So uh, the, the two-way communication is more like, uh, would you like to see more? Do you want to know, learn more about the event? Yes, no. So it's, it's fairly simple um, and it's all, also fairly simple to build. Or you can have this uh, more complex bots or a combination of all of them. So you can see the whole spectrum. It's from, you know, human to human on-site chat and then to the AI powered bot, uh, which is quite complex, and um, uh, that's the part that I, know, uh, I don't know how to do. Uh, but uh, this is where the developers come in, and uh, we need them for, for those. Usually, um, the chatbot, you know, the intent of the chatbot, why you would have it, is um, to, to perform a particular action. So you need to know first, before you start using the chatbot, or planning the chatbots, or uh, developing a chatbot, why do you want the chatbot? Why uh, is it just because it's trendy, or is it going to help, you know, the, the bring some sort of uh, um, engagement or, uh, you know, what, what would be this, the desired results that you would like to have? Um, here, here is one example. Um, Drift, uh, or in this case, Driftbot. Drift is actually a service, and um, it's one of the, the, the ones that I really like because I can make them. Um, I can make the bots in Drift. It's, it's fairly simple. Um, it, it takes a little bit of time at the beginning, but the, the logic is simple. Um, so they also have on their website, they have the Drift bot. Why would you, why would you say that it's a bot? Why would you um, be open about it? Does anybody have any ideas? Why would that make sense? Or does it make sense? Yes, Mike. Exactly. So to, to me, the expectations. It's also transparent. You know, it's, it's less, yeah. It's less hostile to the customer than discovering the way through the conversation. Yeah, exactly. So it's transparent. And you set the expectations. That's the, the main reason why we do it. Um, I was, uh, I think, a year, and a, ho uh, uh, a year and a half ago, I was at a conference in Paris about uh, chatbots and AI and things like that. And uh, one lady in the, in the audience said perfectly that the main reason why she doesn't like using chatbots is that it really sounds like a really stupid human. And that's because it, it's not transparent that, you know, it's a bot. And then you feel like, you know, talking to, I don't know, an, an agent or a service rep that really doesn't, they're really kind, but they don't know how to help you. And I've had experience with that uh, when I lost my luggage. So um, if you see the drift bot, you can see also the tone of the conversation. You can see it's, you know, it uses emoji. Um, it's uh, it usually starts the majority of the conversations start uh, hey there or hi or you know how are you doing or um, uh, do you want to learn more about our website or our services or what brings you here something like that and because their their tone of conversation is a little bit more cheeky so they're like uh, checking me out it's, uh, something that probably you cannot pull off with uh, other brands at least not all of them. Um, and then, you know, I answered, and this is actually, I didn't type it in, so it was one of the options, you cannot see that from the screen, but it was one of the options, so it was a closed, um, you know, maybe two or three options that I could click on and answer, and then it would push more. So these are the playbooks, so like scenarios that anybody can do.
Uh, it's fairly simple and you know, it takes a little bit time to understand the logic and what you want to do, but it's, it's really simple. So I can answer here, uh, that would be great or no thanks. And then depending on what I answer, um, you know, it, it leads me uh, all the way to, to the end of the playbook. So when we write for the chatbots, um, it needs to be really you know, simple grammar, simple um, short sentences. Uh, it, they need to be correct though, but um, you know, the way you text, when you text or when you chat with uh, family and friends, how do you do that? Do you really write long messages, long, long sentences? Probably not. Um, but since you're doing it with a chatbot, it still needs to be correct. Um, they can be personalized. So you, you can see here, uh, when I came back to a certain website where they already had uh, the bot integrated and because I gave them information the previous time, so they knew my name, um, they're saying, hey Asna, were you able to you know, get your questions answers answered? And um, because they know more about me, they can also personalize the information. And I don't mean by personalization only saying my name, but also offering me something based on the pages I was visiting, based on you know, the previous interaction I had with them, they can just uh, automate this uh, conversation and push something that would be of interest uh, to me. Um, and then qualifying leads, what does that mean? When you're using leads for sales, which is something that in B2B um, we're doing more and more, um, you want to qualify it the traffic that comes to the website. Because if Mike here is, for example, our sales rep, I want to push him all the leads that I as a marketer have, um, because not all of them are really relevant. So I'm just wasting his time because he keeps calling uh, people who are not interested in the products or maybe are just students want to learn about something. Um, so we can ask those people, um, not we could ask them live, obviously, uh, in a chat, but um, if you're talking about chatbots, the chatbot can ask them the questions. And these are the qualifying questions. So uh, you ask a few things that are really relevant to use the company, so to the sales. Uh, and based on the answers, um, you can you know, program that uh, if they say this, 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 you know, if they uh, answer positively to these questions, yes, let's get them to the sales rep. And then the sales rep can call them in maybe five minutes. So uh, it can be fairly quick. And the research shows that if they call them in five minutes, there's a, a much greater chance that they would really actually buy it because they still remember the conversation. And they, if they ask them, you know, what was the, the why did you want to, um, you know, check the website or was it, what is it that you wanted to talk about? Um, it, there's a better chance that they would be inclined to buy it or um, at least push them to the end of the or lower in the sales cycle. Um, the other thing is that the context is given. So if somebody is talking to a chatbot at midnight, um, nobody is online really from the team. The next morning when people come in, so the team when, comes, uh, when, when they come in, they can see the context. They, can, they know what I asked, they know uh, what I answered. So when they contact me via email, for example, they already know what to say because, um, and I'm really more happy uh, because I said those things, and I'm really more happy if they already know a part of it because as I told you the experience uh, that I had with Air France last week when I called I think I, start, I stopped contact at 13 so I think I made 13 plus calls and every time I said the same story over and over again so I spent first three minutes just repeating myself and this shortens the cycle for me and of course for them because they can you know they can say Hi Asna, we know that you have this issue, if it's a service thing, or uh, we know that you want to buy this or, or interested in this product, and they can be you know, one step ahead and, and already, answer, already offer me a solution. Um, they can also organize meetings. So this is also a drift example. So it's really simple. You just can, in my office, we use uh, Office 365. Some people use Google Calendar, so we just connect it with that. And um, if they want a meeting with, uh, for example, if they want a meeting with me, um, they would just, I'm now here, so obviously I'm, I'm not available. And if my, my calendar is full at this time, it cannot be scheduled. But otherwise, you know, it just, the calendar pops up. It says, you want a meeting with Yasna, pick a day, pick a time, depending on the free time that uh, I have in my schedule. So it's fairly simple. And this is something, this is not Drift. This is something uh, called chat fuel. Did you ever, have you ever heard about chat fuel before? 
Um, it's also a fairly simple tool. It is a little bit more complex, but uh, for somebody with a little bit of technical skills, but not necessarily uh, a developer, um, I think you can, you, you could build a bot. We played a little bit uh, with my friends. Uh, so it's also, it's, it's, no, sorry, this one is also Drift. The, the next one is, um, is Chat Fuel, but both of them are fairly simple, so you could, you know, build it yourself. This one is actually Drift, and you can see that, you know, it's a, uh, uh, you're, just drawing a uh, drawing workflow. So you're just saying, okay, this is the greeting, this is the first questions based on the answer. If the answer is this, then, you know, take them to this. If the answer is what we want the answer to be, then this is the goal. So the goal could be that they leave us an email, that they book a meeting, that they um, um, sign up, uh, uh, that they leave us uh, a phone number so we can call them, depending on what the goal was. Um, the targeting can be really, you know, it can be really segmented. So, for example, when you have a bot, you don't necessarily, if I had a bot on my website and you all came to that website, you wouldn't necessarily see the same thing. Because Mike is not from Lithuania, and, um, uh, you know, so even the uh, geographical location can matter. Uh, and maybe, you know, Mike was already um, once on the website, already, we already know that it's Mike, so we just say, hi, Mike, and um, ask him uh, different things because we wouldn't ask him the same thing. That wouldn't make sense. And for somebody um, that I uh, haven't met before, uh, and you're the first time on the website, we would ask you another thing. And we, we could second that even more. So, for example, if you came from a different uh, website, we would ask you different things. Um, so it can be really, really segmented. And when you have the options of being, uh, of um, having the, the communication segmented, that means that you can be really uh, much more on the point to what the, the person really needs. Um, so um, this is one of the examples. So uh, a company called Perfecto, this is actually from the Drift uh, website, I think. Uh, but it's really amazing that the conversion rate, um, you can just see it here. So after three months, after six months, so basically their uh, overall conversion rate, the people who visited the website and, you know, the, the ratio between people who uh, became needs, so they gave us, uh, they, they gave them the email, and the people who visited the website um, uh, was four times higher after six months than before. Why? Because they didn't use any forms. They just use the chat. So they, they deleted all forms on the website because, no, uh, let, let, let's be honest, uh, nobody likes to, especially long forms, nobody likes to <laughs> enter the data in the forms. And, you know, the conversational thing, and it, it's, much, it's much nicer, it's much easier uh, to do it like that. Um, this is actually our, nobody probably talks Slovenian, uh, but this is actually our, um, our Slack from our agency. So also Slack, uh, do you use Slack? Can you raise your hands? Yeah, probably a few people. So you probably know that you have a Slack bot, right? And it's really simple. So we have, uh, well, we're a live stream, so I can tell you, I'll tell you after uh, what we use it for, but it's mainly, you know, jokey stuff. But we also use it for um, like templates or guides or things like, you know, the things that you're always searching and you cannot find it. Uh, on the raw box, we have a few keywords that trigger that. And uh, if I mention template, it, Slackbot triggers, you know, here are all the templates in one place. So I can just use that and not bother looking uh, where we, did we put it on the Dropbox. And um, this is another type of, um, of chatbot uh, on BBC, uh, oh, sorry, on Twitter that BBC used. So this, is for, uh, this was for EU referendum and then also um, US presidential elections. They used the bot um, to deliver in real time, based on the data that came in, they, um, the bot drew the graphs and pushed it and posted it on the website, on the Twitter, sorry. Um, so this is something that, you know, um, a designer probably cannot do that fast, and it was automatically pushed based on the data that came in. Um, one of the good things of the chatbots is also that the open rates and the click rates, click-through rates are much higher than compared to email. So if we are really happy with email, uh, you know, if it's over 20% of the open rate, um, in chatbots you can see, oh, it's not really clear, but um, you can see this 
uh, 80 um, uh, in comparison to 25 uh, of, the, of the male. And for example, the click-through rates, and this is chat fuels um, statistics, um, click-through rates are 30% in messengers, and uh, in messengers, sorry, that's Facebook Messenger, and just 3% in, in mail, which is basically what we see when we send up a lot of emails. Um, so I think this part of, you know, the, the, these results is that it's novelty. So um, it depends. I, I think when, as with all new technology, we need to learn it. We need to, we need to see if we can use it, um, not just because it's trendy, but if you can find a business case for your company or just try it with a pilot. And if it makes sense, if it brings results, you can, you know, then um, use it uh, on, on other brands, for example. That's what we're using right now with the client. Uh, but it definitely makes sense to try. And when you see this kind of results, um, you know, it's, it's really, uh, it's the data that, uh, uh, you know, the CEOs, like Mike mentioned, um, want to have. Um, of course, there are negative aspects. Um, I want to end on the negative note, but, um, for example, uh, Mindshare uh, did research that um, said uh, that 75% uh, people want to know that they're talking. To a chatbot because otherwise they feel cheated and also uh, almost half of them uh, said that they it feels creepy when you don't know it's a it's really a chatbot when you think it's a it's a person but it's not um, one of the things is that um, I didn't see it that often but um, maybe half a year ago uh, a lot of the service chatbots were female which as a female I didn't really like uh, but you know it's a service industry so maybe that's a uh, a female made more sense. Um, sometimes, you know, it's not clear it's a bot. Uh, it could be too spam, it could be too pushy. Um, the retention rate is sometimes really, really low. So it can be as low as 4% in, in uh, day seven. So after seven days, uh, on that's particularly for, for Facebook Messenger, after seven days, people start uh, stop using it. So they, you know, delete the, the chatbot or um, uh, they, they uh, click that they, they don't want to receive any more messages. Um, and I want to leave you with this, that uh, you can build your own bot. It's not that hard. Um, Drift is just one of the examples. Chat Fuel is another, but Drift is probably easier. Um, Drift is more for B2B, I would say. Um, but before you do anything, it makes sense to learn to think, what problem do you want to solve? You know, why, why do you want, you want to do that? Um, what platform do you want to use? So do you want to go where the users already are? like Messenger would um, probably make the best sense. Uh, or do you want to put it on the website so you, especially if your services or products are quite complicated and um, if the value is quite high and that's typically in B2B, uh, it probably makes sense to put a chatbot because the chatbot can help you and help the users navigate when you're not online and um, usually you are not because uh, if you don't have a live chat, you're not on the website when they visit. And even just by getting the leads in terms of you know, the emails that you can send a follow-up email, which shouldn't be too salesy, I must say, uh, but really helpful, really, you know, as inbound marketing um, paradigm uh, goes that you want to help, not sell. sell. Um, and then um, you need a server and you need to learn which service to use, but that's something where your um, developers, agencies uh, probably can help. And uh, with all things, um, we want to learn how to optimize. So we want to analyze what we're doing. Uh, you have, you know, every, every tool has its analytics. You have uh, bot analytics like uh, this that um, uh, can use different, different type of messaging systems, chatbot systems. Uh, but definitely you want to monitor the, the feedback and you need to optimize all the time. And especially in the beginning, you'll optimize a lot because you know, you'll try something, you'll see it's not working, and then you'll try to optimize to, to make it better. And this is the example of, um, of the um, bot analytics uh, analyzing. And that's it from me. I'm trying to beat the time. <laughs> if you have any questions, welcome. Thank you very much, Yasna. And we have one question coming in. Uh, have you already experienced chatbots in internal communication? 
I had, I had the questions before. Uh, I didn't personally, um, because I don't do any internal communication, which is probably the reason why, but I know that exist and that, um, you know, that they are using them also for internal communication, but I don't, I don't have personal experience, unfortunately. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yasna, and she'll be around as well. And we are halfway through our conference. Let's give her another round of applause. We are halfway through our conference, and what I propose, I propose a 10-minute break, and we reconvene exactly at quarter to three, is it? And, uh, and we will come back with a panel discussion, and we will be moving from international more towards context in Lithuania, and we'll have some Lithuanian speakers coming in, which I'm really excited about as well. So I'll see you quarter to three. <laughs>